So another business builders. On last week's episode, we were talking about bad fit clients, um, and I suppose that not necessarily bad fit clients. It's going the other way now. So it's kind of client potentially is justified. They are putting in a complaint. Um, they're unhappy. They've reached out to you. They're not happy about something either the team's done or the way the mm-hmm. service has been rendered, and they made a complaint. And I wanted to kind of focus on dealing with those client complaints and the best way to kind of deal with them, Mm -hmm. what kind of negatives it can kind of spawn into for your business and why complaints are actually opportunities in disguise, which I think is Mm -hmm. something I took as a business nugget a good few months ago. Mm -hmm. It's really helped me quite recently. Mm -hmm. Do you want to kick us off, Mark? Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll kick off. and And again, it's all about being honest and all that sort of stuff is like, Sometimes in in business, not everything can all be rosy, and yep. you can generate lots of leads. So, we've quite recently had uh, complaints um, in two instances uh, with clients. Um, and I'll, I'm, I'll go into I won't go into I'll go into some detail, but I won't go into every bit of detail because there's obviously like you know um, privacy and all that sort of stuff there with staff and even with the client. But I think one client, I think we, I think we felt that we were always doing a, a good job with them. Um, we're getting through a lot of the tasks and they had mentioned it quite a few times that like what you guys are doing is absolutely brilliant it's it's, it's fantastic um, and then there was a couple of things with the uh, kind of different situations they they broke a bit of trust with us uh, it left a bit of a kind of sour like but they, they, they essentially like denied it to be honest and I, would, I think the relationship was just getting a bit a little bit funny uh, if I'll be honest Um and then what happened is one of the staff members was asked to do something but it was like at 8 45 8 30 in the morning and he said yeah yeah no problem i'll get it done today but he never he never understood or or took the information that he needed at like asap sort of thing and he sent it to him like in the afternoon but by that time it was too late and then the guy looked really really bad so that just it was almost like the straw that broke the camel's back and then they were like they, they'd phoned up um and they they were wanting to cancel on us um, they just generally like yeah i'm not happy we're not getting this done we're not getting that done and i was like it was a shock to me to be perfectly honest um and they, they wanted to go on to like basically a zoom call i'll give you the other example and then i'll kind of give you the idea like what i've sort of done to to try and rectify it so the second one was again it was just that it was probably a, a, an oversight um, on terms of it was a new staff member and he'd been asked to obviously spend money on a campaign and they, they, he spent it on the wrong campaign. So there was an overspend on their budget uh, for the Google Ads budget, um, which essentially they weren't happy with and they're like, well, we shouldn't be you know, at fault for spending that type of money, which I totally get and, it, yep. and, it, and it's in our, our side of things. So in the first instance, um, it's, I, I really think you know the way of kind of dealing with client complaints is listening is one of the the biggest biggest thing. Um, listening and really kind of delving into like what what the kind of real issue is. So in the what in the first one really sort of sat down listening to what 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 their real issues were. And the first one it just surprised me because it was the first time I heard it and I was like I. I I don't, you know, I don't feel it's fair because it's like the first time and it's like, I believe, you know, it's not one striking you out, like at least give us like a, 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 opportunity an opportunity, you know, if any, even if a staff member is the same, if they do something like horrifically wrong, I'll go, that's, that's your kind of warning, don't let it happen again, it was a big, a big, a big mess up, don't let that happen again, but if it's a continued one, that's where you can kind of go, well, this is not working, so I said that to them, I said, like, listen, Give us another chance, and he's like, "Well, we'll think about it." So we took him out for lunch, in a real clear day me- a meeting uh, about it, and he, we talked about the thing that we kind of we trust issued before, um, and I talked about really what I kind of obviously want to do with the company and what we kind of found, and they went like, "Right, okay, you know, we'll, we'll stay on." So we never lost them, but it was a, it was gen- generally a kind of complaint, but it was really kind of trying to understand exactly the the bits of detail and all that sort of stuff because. Now as I've been growing the business, I'm not on the clients as much. So I like you're trusting staff members to do everything, and you're trusting staff members to have that same level of communication yep. and to probably pick up. It's not. It's like you pick up and like we small cues of like, are they actually happy? But as some people have not got that talent of like, actually they sound like a wee bit like they're in a bit ah, of you a can mood. Tell there's attention there, or yeah. 
On the other one, um, that was obviously an overspend. So again, you know, it's, it's pretty big overspend. So I'm like, I don't want to be like the one to kind of fork that out. And it has been all just down to communication. I think this one had been pro- a process issue, um, and it's been again something because I had been working on the project. I had then hired this new member of staff. He'd been working on it, and the process kind of broke down. Now I automatically have certain process automatically do certain things but it's not all documented and we've kind of said to like try and document it now we have so i think we have solved the problem with the client so we've not had to basically fork out and pay back the budget which is a big big sign but i really do i think you know mainly complaints happen because there's there's a little bit of a slip up or a little bit of attention to detail now we're all human at the end of the day humans make mistakes people make mistakes like I, like nobody's perfect um it's just sometimes that these mistakes can be you know ha- like much worse if there's a situation that happens so you're going to work in the morning you crash your car and then you're going to crash your car and you have a fight with a wife and then all of a sudden in your marketing agency does something else it gets always it, it it's amplified, ele- it's amplified it completely and that's then like do you know what stuff that i don't want to you know don't want to work with you anymore and um, but i essentially like listen and again other things as well see if we are ever at fault as a marketing agency and it's like you know i've i've went like that like, you don't need to pay for that like there was there was a time you know years and years ago and um, where a, a staff member sort of sent out an email and it went it, it wasn't gdpr proof and she'd sent it to the wrong list and all that she looked really bad and i said listen you don't need to pay your fees um you just totally refund that that's our, our mistake um you know and that's like a goodwill gesture to try and you know yeah, deal, with the, deal right. with the complaint <laughs> um but i think listening and then communicating is massively important um, and we talked about it before as well as like a lot of complaints can happen about not managing expectations so if you have over promised from the very start that's where you get complaints as well because yep. that's where you're going to get your one star reviews you told me you were, you were going to get me 50 leads i'm not i've only not even had one lead yet i've only had 49 oh. <laughs> that is, that is a bad fit well. <laughs> but it's not 50 <laughs> that's yeah. a bad fit client isn't it Hey, with that as well so I mean what about you been, how have you kind of dealt with client complaints and like have you any experience or any sort of stories that you've had before yeah so I'd say that um, we've all got character flaws and I, I would definitely say I had some character flaws around this area in the past um, and I would like to say that I was improving but you know time will tell <laughs> so we had um, complaints and stuff like that and you're thinking right there's, there's like a kind of genuine complaint something's happened we need to kind of resolve this and then I would have kind of looked at it and I, I tried to look at it in the past as like, are they in the right? So it was almost like I was trying to work out, are they right to complain or are they wrong to complain? And then I would treat it differently based on what I felt about that. Whereas in actual fact, the maturity has come in the sense of complaints aren't complaints. They are an opportunity to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. So genuinely when someone's complaining, it's because they feel that it's how they feel it's not it might not be justified but they look at it so I've had it before where a client's had an expectation and they're thinking right you know this is 10 hours of work and they look at it and they say I thought I would have got a lot more for my money than that or something like that and you're thinking well we keep time logs so we kind of know that that's been done but maybe we should have been more kind of transparent about this is what we'll work on this mm-hmm. is what I think is achievable in the time we kind of didn't do that mm-hmm. so I was looking at that scenario and I thought do you know what it isn't part of the kind of process and it's not something we do but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of like recomp you a certain amount of time because I don't want you to kind of feel that way now that's not going to change it and realistically it probably is a disconnect on how long things take so you know that expectation still has to be addressed like Mm -hmm. that but I'd like to do this as a a kind of gesture to try and see if we can kind of solve it because I don't want to have an unhappy client that kind of way. Now, I kind of knew at that point that person wouldn't be a client that likely want to put like a review or mm. be a case study that kind of way. And I can completely understand that. But I think it's really important. Like what I'm seeing now is if something happens that's wrong, I try to think about it from how would I feel if I was a customer. So always put yourself in the right, customer's shoes. So you, always there, you say, right, So if I'm frustrated and I'm thinking, right, it takes a lot of kind of 
courage to even go back to a castle. Like some people are like really quick and they just go, listen, pa, this isn't good enough. But other people, it's quite a lot of anxiety to go, how do I bring this up with Mark? Mm-hmm. I like Mark, but he's not really done right here or John's yeah. not done right here. So if they kind of communicate and they do that, what I'm trying to do now is see it from if I was them and then look at it and say, what would be fair compensation? And it doesn't necessarily need to be like, oh, that's wrong, I'll give you a refund, or that's wrong, I'll comp you time. But trying to look at it in the scenario and say, right, what is their main point of objection? Is it the way the client's being communicated with? Is it expectations? Is it, you know, I thought I would have this for Tuesday and you've delivered it late on a Wednesday? And you're like, that's quite a minor thing, but maybe they had this big kind of deadline or something and we've dropped the ball there. So I try to look at it as like, what's the learning in it? Like, what could we change about our process to avoid that from happening again? Mm-hmm. But also what seems appropriate. So it's like last month we had our best sales month since hybrid has started and I've kind of went much more into production because I want to make sure that the actual projects are delivered and everything's moving away. So we had challenges and I think that's a big thing to think about is see just because a client's complained, sometimes it's not because you're a bad company, sometimes Mm -hmm. it's because there's internal stuff happening that really impacts. So we had... Anya had took a week's holiday because Desiree had started, so it gave the opportunity for her to take a wee break. Fair enough. But then she got COVID when she was off, so it extended it. So if you look at it like from a numbers standpoint, she only worked four days of that month. Yep. Which basically puts you on the back foot regards to billing. So it yep. means you've not rendered down the retainers the way they should be rendered down. Also, Desiree's then focused on trying to like solve challenges in the infrastructure which is having an impact on multiple clients at the same time. So it's like, as a business owner, I had to make a decision and say, right, I want you to fix the infrastructure and not come off that until that's sorted. Mm -hmm. And I want um, these kind of retainers that didn't get rendered for all those clients to be communicated. So I phoned them all manually and Mm -hmm. said, I know that we have this like rule about auto rollover and all this kind of way, but it's not on you, it's on me. We didn't render it back. It's not Mm -hmm. that there wasn't work to do. So here's what we're going to do about it. And I think that the clients really appreciate is being transparent about, it's not excuses, it's not like, oh, this happened, this happened, therefore that. It's like, I acknowledge that you received poor service. Yeah. I know why you received poor service, and I know it's not something that's going to be there every month, mm-hmm. but it does show me that we are exposed to a certain level of risk. Yep. So at the scale we are at just now, this is how we're going to make sure this works. But longer term, these are the changes that I'm introducing. Mm-hmm. And I think by including the clients in that conversation, nothing's hidden it's not like a oh, it doesn't seem like Mark to me like why why mm-hmm. does that feel different or you know and you're kind of going oh I don't want to tell them that somebody was off sick or yeah. I don't want to tell them that this resource was away doing this and you're thinking just tell them just yeah. try and be truthful and honest about it because I think people go I get it because they're a business owner as well yeah. um, and it's like people often will look at that and say look I appreciate your integrity coming back to me and saying you know what's going on you know, rather than kind of shying away for it or try to like drum it up like, oh, we don't make mistakes. You know, yeah. like, well, newsflash, you do make mistakes. Yeah, that's what I say. People make mistakes and it's communication. If there is a mess up, you need to tell somebody. So if you buy mm-hmm. a hotel room and it was supposed to be the honeymoon suite and then the honeymoon, something's happened, happened to the honeymoon suite, you have to go, listen, sorry, you're not going to get that. We're going to move you into a room that's, well, it's, it's a wee bit less, but it's actually like still a good room, still got a sea view. Right, this you is know, what we'll do about we'll it. Do, but we'll, and we'll probably take, you know, because you've spent a little bit of money, we'll probably take a little bit of money off. Or we'll give you something, we'll give you something. We'll give you that the next time. We'll give you we'll extra, give you know, yeah. you, you will pay for you to do that. And it's like, oh, wow, that's great. Some of it's out your hands, though, is the way I look at it is, you know, especially, like, say it's like a staff member, so they're not like um, puppets that you're in control no, of. right? Exactly. So you can't control what they say, what they do. So in a way, all you can really do is actually look at the actions and say, right, this is what we're going to do about it. Mm-hmm. So I can make changes to make sure that staff understand this isn't acceptable. I can make changes to say, you were billed for something that you probably shouldn't have yeah. been. I can make a change. But I think as long as you're kind of fair about it, clients will kind of do that. But it comes back to what we're kind of saying about kind of positive reviews is I'm actively trying to kind of keep our clients happy. And I'm glad I kind of learned that lesson because for me it was almost like a it just gets to a point you're thinking, do you know what, it probably is just a bad fit. Mm-hmm. Let them go, we're losing money, try to keep them happy and be like, that's the wrong attitude to take, mm-hmm. I think. Because when I was looking at it, I was just like, oh, total pain, you know, we're not, we're not really making good money, we're 
putting more money after it. Like it's cost us thousands. Like I've got a client that pays us under a grand, and I probably spent about four grand this month mm-hmm. just to kind of keep everything at an even keel. From a purely financial perspective, that is insanity. Mm-hmm. It is absolute insanity. However, if they remain a client, I know I'll make that money back. Mm-hmm. But also, other clients would have experienced that issue if I hadn't solved it. So although it was expensive, it was the right call to make, I think. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to kind of be that way in the sense of I'm analysing it and saying, that's part of the company I'm building and I want to make sure it's strong, I want to make sure it's kind of resilient. Um, and one of the kind of customers, I actually seen that, um, they, they probably don't know I've seen this, but the, the benefit of a network is you've got more eyes. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that they kind of posted looking for, you know, like, oh, could we get a recommendation for support? And I'm like, they didn't talk to me about it, but I can understand why they did it. Now, rather than embarrassing them and saying, like, look, I know that you reached out to ask for an alternate quote, that kind of way, I, I just, I didn't even mention it. I just said, here's what we're going to do. This is what, what it is. Just so you know, this isn't getting built, that isn't getting built. This is how this is going to work out. You will not be down money for this situation and it will be stronger in the long run. Mm-hmm. I understand this has happened and this is what I'm doing about it. And they actually said that to me. They were like, look, really appreciate you stepping up and doing this is what it is. Now, the true measure of that is, will we move away, mm-hmm. right? And I said it to the staff, like, here's the message what they wrote. I was excluded for the post, so they've obviously, like, filtered me out of it. But then because your network is so large, you're actually yeah. getting that screenshotted and sent to you. And I was like, part of me felt embarrassed about that as well, because yeah. I was like, that's not good. You know, yeah. that really isn't good. And they didn't say, like, oh, we are supported by Agency X. They actually yeah. just said, we're looking for somebody to do X, Y, and Z. And it was more about like the functionality of how the support would be rendered. But I was kind of thinking, oh, it's hard. And But it was my opportunity, so it was for me to step up and solve yeah. it. And I think that's the kind of the good complaints to have. You've also got the bad complaints to have. So it's like, that's a complaint you can do something with because they're coming to you, you've observed something, you know they're unhappy, they've said they're unhappy, or you can feel they're unhappy. Mm-hmm. The ones that are really dangerous, and I think we should talk about it as well, is the... I've instantly made a snap call, but I don't like how this has been done. I've one star you in Google My Business, mm-hmm. and now you're in this scenario where you're like, yeah. ah, <laughs> yeah. what and do we do now? You know? Yeah, and I wanted to go into that as well. I, th- I think one of the best ways to kind of deal with complaints is actually having a plan of how you deal with a complaint. Yeah. You know, if we get a complaint, or if you can kind of source a complaint, or, you know, can can they come to you? You know, so if they aren't, ha- aren't happy, do the, does the customer know that they've got to contact you or contact a customer success manager or somebody within there that, that they contact first and foremost? Because going to that one star review, they're really in a, a mood. It's pro- probably because they've, they've said to somebody that it's they're annoyed. It's gone too far. It's yeah. gone too far. But I mean, I've I've not I've not had any one star reviews, which is great. Touchwood, but Touchwood, I know. Yeah, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's like, oh my and god. They, but the the, the thing is, I, I do know with clients, I have advised them on it. So I had a cleaning company and a one star review, and I was like that to them. It's just it's basically the way you have to deal with it. So the person went on, came home, it didn't really fit their needs um, and what they wanted to do. They left a one star review, but it was really just a communication breakdown. So he'd phoned them up. He spoke to them and he explained exactly because it was him not understanding it fully. And then the guy was like, "Right, okay, I kind of get it a little bit more now." And he says, "Like, could you please, you know, go in and, and remove that, and retract yeah, the yeah. one star review?" And he, and he did go in and remove that. Are you not expect to go for like a one to a five. Uh-huh. It's like yeah. the, the ones damaging. And the ones so, damaged because so I kind of say, yeah. like, look, "I get that. Like, we can make this right." Yeah, and we, and we bring it down. But you you have to have a recovery plan in place. Um, if that actually happens, you know, of like, right, we now need to, you know, sit down, like, speak to the person, you know, ha- like, get all the people in the room that are involved in it, you know, if it's your fault, you apologise for it as well, you know, you know, from there, do you, you know, is there a re- refund need to be given, you know, you know what what is the steps that you need to take to rectify that situation? Now, in my two can cl- clients, client complaints that I talked about just there I've actually managed to rectify the situation I've still got them as paying clients like even yeah, just exactly. now so, right, so um, the way that I've resolved it I've resolved it right um, so it's ultimately making sure you resolve it right um, I think 
obviously involving me is a good thing, but as as I said, probably some of the issues is coming because I have been getting as a, a bigger agency. I'm moving away from a lot of that stuff and I'm not being able to handle it, but I won't be able to handle customer complaints every single time as well. I'm going to have, I'm gonna gonna have, to, have, hire some, staff I'm gonna have to hire somebody that does the same level of, right, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so th there's, there's that training aspect that you're going to have to bring. And that's why I think having a, maybe a standard operating procedure, you know, a client complaint standard operating procedure, this is what you, this is what you do. Um, to try and rectify that and turn that one star into a, a five star. <laughs> <laughs> I to get it turned around. I um, think if you get a, a one star kind of review with that, I've, I've seen different schools of thought for it. So obviously with Google My Business, you can't remove this the, the thing, whereas mm -hmm. with things like, say, YouTube and stuff like that, you can remove it. Yeah. Um, so you will get people that are just being silly and posting yeah. all the nonsense and they're trolls, basically. Uh, and then you get the other ones that it's like, you know, that is actually a genuine complaint, but I kind of wish we weren't airing or washing on yeah. Facebook or whatever we are. So I would say with that kind of review, one of the best things I've found to do is reply to them like that. So we had one, it's quite interesting, it was caused by, well, not for us, but for another business, and it was caused by cold calling. So the person had said, like, I really don't appreciate your phone calls, that kind of way. And they would, they'd they made it out as if we'd called them seven times or something. And I'm like, doesn't work like that. Because yeah. it's like, once they kind of said, look, no interest, that we just remove them. Mm -hmm. um, but they, you know, genuinely, they probably added multiple approaches from other companies, barreled it all together. We happen to be the brand that's on the hook for it. So yeah. we're getting it both barrels. And, you know, they, they wrote the review. Um, so rather than sort of like shying away for it or try to hide it or drawing it out in positivity or you mm -hmm. know that kind of way just reply to it and says look really disappointed to hear this completely yeah. understand where you're coming from here's what we're going to do about the processes um i'm not sure how that happened with seven times like i'd love to have the opportunity to speak to you about that uh who it was specifically that phoned you and mm -hmm. kind of get to the bottom of it um because our standard and i just say that it says our standard process is this and when a customer says i'm not interested it gets noted and mm -hmm. it actually removes it for the call queue um, so because I replied to that, it was interesting. So I was doing an interview probably about, let's say, six months after that. And the marketing person I was hiring was a market manager. And she says, I was really, really happy and excited that I seen that so that you replied to that personally. And you like kind of took that situation more lightly. I acknowledge this happened. Obviously, understandably disappointed that like you've been yeah. made to feel that way by something my company's done. That's not our standard process. I want to understand more about it. Can we communicate that kind of way? Didn't ask him to remove the review. Didn't ask him to do anything like that. But it's like, kind of like Amazon. So like, say you go, right, five star, five star, five star, there's one star. In my head, I'm going, is it a Karen? Or is it actually a genuine mm -hmm. thing? So mm -hmm. this is terrible. And you're like, oh, my veins, right? Phew, I'm not buying that. Mm -hmm. Versus, oh, this is terrible. And the way it was boxed, yeah. the sell tape uh, was too tight. And you're yeah. like, oh, come on, behave. Yeah. I mean, you get it. You get it in a TripAdvisor, don't you? Ah, exactly. We went to this uh, five-star hotel, and it, uh, the macaroni and cheese wasn't warm enough. You know, like you're like, come does on, that really matter? What, does that, it really matter? You know, kind of you're living affected your night sleep with it. You know? Exactly. Exactly. So I think like you kind of rationalise it, but you need to remember that other people rationalise the exact same way. So if mm. I go through the reviews and I go, oh, that's interesting. They got a one-star review. Then they have got fifty-seven positive reviews. A one-star mm. review. Like straight away, you know, there's something yeah. different there, but it kind of stands to reason. Like, if you have a thousand customers in, let's say, whatever amount of period of time, you're going to get a couple that are like kind of. I'm not saying that they're all like going to be a percentage that are unhappy, but there'll be a few people that are kind of grumpy or they're going, mm, "This didn't work out," or that. You know, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the same way as you have staff, mm -hmm. you're going to have staff members that don't work out. You're going to have clients that don't work out. You're going to have sales or marketing campaigns that don't work. It's just natural. It's the it's the mm -hmm. way of things. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that this constant five star thing is uh, deluded us into this idea that companies are perfect. Mm -hmm. I can name some of the largest companies on earth that have exceptional customer experience and they get it so wrong mm -hmm. because it's bloody hard keeping yeah. a customer happy one hundred percent of the time. Yeah. If you've had a relationship and I, I've had this where you've had a relationship with somebody for four or five years and then one thing, and they don't like how that's been resolved, and it's like the relationship never even existed. Mm -hmm. And you're like, never mind the fact that we've helped build your company to here. Mm -hmm. It's this one thing that's really upsetting you. Absolutely. And it, it drives me nuts, but at the same time, do you know what? I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. And I think, for me, I've always just tried to 
jump right onto the back of the review and just really treat it as if it's like a, a phone call. Mm-hmm. You know, like totally acknowledge the person's point, actually take ownership of it, mm-hmm. see what it is you could do to improve it, why has that happened, who was in, like, it's like a case, yeah. email me here, that kind of way. But then at least people say, they complained at this time, they got a response at that time, it was the owner of the business or a relationship manager, yeah. that's not a company that shies away from a problem. Yeah. Whereas it, if you're kind of like, oh, I think they're going to move it, you know? It's kind of ingrained in me. I, I worked for a, a company before, it was a basically done quality management software. So um, we were always involved in ISO 9001 quality that's management. Quality, yeah. right? Um, so I was writing content about it, all that sort of stuff. And one of the things that you have to do is a, it's a kappa. So it's corrective action, preventative action. So when something bad happens, mm-hmm. you have to have a corrective action, right? So what is the procedure that you, you put into place um, to make sure you know that you fix the problem? And then there's the preventative action. So now that that's happened, you mean to make sure it doesn't happen just again. Like, yeah. Now obviously this is like, in a, it could be like manufacturing system or something like that and a machine breaks down and it's like because it wasn't maintained properly and then it's like then you need to then put in a maintenance plan in place to be the preventative action so i do that the exact same thing with customer complaints so if a customer complaint appears and it's been down to like obviously the staff member there was as i said to you there was obviously like an overspend um, the preventative action now now we have a process in place they're getting a they get sent a budget a uh, review basically at the end of every week and it basically highlights exactly what they're spending on the budget and we will we will highlight in red if it's over or under uh, with it as well so that there's that constant communication and we will actually like if there's anything that looks dodgy to us we'll actually email them and say i want you to look at this to make sure that you're i okay check with it, it or better. and check with it so that it, we can so that that just doesn't go down the line um, so um, if you do have a customer complaint or something like the cold calling you just make sure that everything is in place you know like so that no, it doesn't happen again and that you always just like, then you reduce all the customer complaints to like zero Aye, exactly that so it's like i think that's the way it was said to me is it's an opportunity to take a corrective action and i think if you look at complaints through that lens rather than this person's criticizing you which is what i think they often get taken as mm-hmm. It's the wrong way to look at it. You need to disconnect emotionally and say they're not actually criticising you. Mm-hmm. They're flagging something that's made them feel bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody feels like that. So it's like, yeah. quickly try to get to a, let's understand the problem and then let's see how we can get yeah. a kind of settlement from that. Yeah. So what would you say then, Mark, was like a, your belter for that? Like, so dealing with a client complaint, what would be the one thing somebody could do? The one thing is, uh, is absolutely the way that you deal with it, the approach that you deal with it. Um, taking ownership if the problem's yours um, but I would say and I said this at the very start the business belter the main thing is listening you know you've got two ears and one mouth so I you don't you, you, you've got to use you don't just jump in and say oh, oh, oh this is like what but you know you you done it you called up at 8.45 in the morning no <laughs> so, you just listen because there's some other situation there there's something and you try and like ask questions try and really delve into like exactly like what the problem is take ownership and and, and they, then they come up with the corrective action what about you what was your business better I would say that it's about taking ownership of a problem so you get above the line and below the line type of attitude and I think you should look to step into a problem and see how you can kind of resolve that for the client rather than try and get like emotional and blaming and oh well it wasn't that it was this it doesn't matter what they've said as a complaint and whether you feel they're right or wrong it's about taking ownership of the situation and making it right for them. Mm-hmm. Later down the line, if you're feeling like it really isn't a good relationship, you can always fire the client or remove the client, but don't do it in a reactive way that's off the back of a highly emotionally charged thing. That's easy for some people and difficult for others because mm-hmm. some people are actually really defensive as soon as you say anything negative, but it's a business at the end of the day. The fact that they're telling you is actually a good scenario because you can yeah. do something about it. Yeah. If they go straight to like a one star review, there's not really much you can do. Yeah. You're, you're going to be in the back foot. Yeah. So long last the customers that actually complain and the ones that are going to go straight to the one star, you know, that's quite damaging to a business. Maybe consider complaining first. Yeah. Um, do you want to wrap us up? Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much everyone for tuning in today. Um, Obviously, you won't be complaining about this podcast and you'll be giving, yourself, giving it a five-star review. Make sure that you give the thumbs up um, you know, and celebrate all our, all our points that we're making, making here. 
Um, but in all honesty, what we'd like you to do is, again, share in the community if you've had any, any complaints and, and most of all, how you actually dealt with the complaints. So we talk about you know, having a corrective active preventive action, having some sort of plan in place. But we're not, we're not experts at, you know, customer complaints because we're so good, you know, and we don't get a lot of the complaints. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but again, if there's a good way that you've dealt with it, share it with everyone because we're all here to try and help each other improve um, and all become business builders. So thank you very much. And it's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from me. Thank you. See you guys.